so many um, so many examples that we have uh, with respect to procurement. Um, what uh, liberal members want is commercials about how well everything is going, and they don't want any accountability. We heard that about the uh, about the Arrive scam app. We, it was supposed to it was supposed to cost uh, eighty thousand dollars. It cost many orders of magnitude more than that, and they tried to thwart. They tried to shut down investigations at absolutely every single turn. We found out, of course, that um, it cost uh, $54 million and that the contractors who worked on it, <clears throat> of course, have had uh, their front doors kicked in by the RCMP and uh, we know now that it has uh, been just the, the very top layer of the onion that is this liberal government. With his decisions carving a place for him in history as the worst prime minister Canada has ever had, Justin Trudeau in his three terms has caused several Canadians agitations, which some citizens and members of parliament have been incredibly vocal about. The likes of Conservative MPs Larry Brock, Michael Barrett, and even some of his own party have been incredibly expressive in their criticism of his administration and exposing acts they find unfavorable to the present and future of the country. I have much to say, but I want to start by offering my sincerest apologies to Mr. Laporte, Mr. Mills, Mr. Albert, and Madame Poulin for this shameless display of a cover-up between the Liberal government and the NDP coalition partners. Because we're all here to do a job. You all have jobs to do when you get back to your respective offices. We are taking you away from your respective offices and the good work that you do day in and day out. And it's no different with politicians. As parliamentarians, we're parliamentarians all year long. We're not parliamentarians when the House is sitting. We don't take a three to four month break and not worry about our responsibilities uh, to the government, sorry, to Canada, to address ongoing issues that are a prevalent concern in Canada. And that is the issue with respect to the fraudulent billing and the broken procurement system that we have in this country that has allowed fraudsters and grifters to take advantage of a broken system that didn't provide the appropriate oversight. And the Liberal government and the members of this Liberal, on this Liberal committee, with their NDP partners, don't want to get to the truth. In an hour-long talk with the Standing Committee on Government Operations and Estimates last week, Larry Brock exposed some atrocious acts of the vacation prime minister that show him to be the fraud several have said that he is. The liberal prime minister isn't the only one with issues, though. The committee is on government operations, and the liberal members of the committee and the NDP members aren't physically present. The virtual attendance option might be there, but the situation is so dire with Canadians protesting and merits physical attendance, maybe even overtime work to resolve the issue. The government clearly knows they're not currying any favor with Canadians. Depending on the poll, they're at least 20 points down. A leader who refuses to smell the coffee and realize he is the most disliked prime minister in the history of this country, completely tone deaf to the reality, tone deaf to his own caucus who quietly and quite often publicly voice their displeasure with his leadership. So they will take cues from a failed leader as a prime minister. They'll take cues from a prime minister's office who loves to control and to mitigate the damage. 
We've been exposing the damage of this issue every single week at government operations. That's the mandate of government operations, to take a look at problems, to identify those problems, to get the full picture, and to look for solutions so that the problem can be resolved in the future. If these members view that to be political or acting as a prosecutor, as Mr. Souza has often indicated from time to time, or being too prosecutorial, Mr. Brock, you've given up your former career as a Crown Prosecutor. You're a parliamentarian now. It's time to be nice. Ask the, or throw the softball questions to witnesses. That's not our job. Our job is to ask the tough questions, get the answers that Canadians are asking. So when we talk about political gamemanship, this is exactly, this is exactly what happened today. People's reactions to Trudeau's lies on pharmacare, taxes, climate change and other things affecting the standard of everyday life is lost on no one except the Prime Minister, who should be aware of and trying to change it. Seeing how he's currently on a 10-day vacation, the man doesn't seem to care much about public opinion and the current investigation into his administration, even if it might lead to his arrest. Maybe he thinks more sunny ways wouldn't turn the tide for his very gloomy, very chilly administration. To close, I am deeply grateful to have this opportunity to serve you and every Canadian across our great country. I am committed to leading an open, honest government that is accountable to Canadians. Repeat, accountable to Canadians lives up to the highest ethical standards, brings our country together, and applies the utmost care and prudence in the handling of public funds. Thank you for having faith in me. Thank you for putting your trust in our team. We will not let you down. What an absolute joke. An absolute lie. We're talking about fraud in this committee. In my respectful opinion, the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau committed the biggest fraud on this country and Canadians. Everything that I read out in the record, he has done the complete opposite. Just that last line, to apply the utmost care and prudence in the handling of public funds. Would we be in the mess we are right now? Would we have the amount of public debt that we have now if he actually for one minute had respect for one dollar of taxpayer money? We all know the heaven and earth he promised in the open letter, and listening to MP Larry recounting it shows the contrast between reality and the Canadian dream. Larry ripped into the Prime Minister, especially his last statement about service and accountability in spending public funds after reading the statement. For him, everything the Prime Minister has done from then to date is a mockery of everything he said, and the massive debt owed by the country is proof of that. Let's face it, the GDP ranking dropped from 10th in the Conservative-led administration in 2015 to its current location at 28th. Plus, the federal debt per person has been steadily increasing since then. The Prime Minister keeps making decisions guaranteed to drive the country deeper into financial ruin, like raising tax rates to fund the Canadian budget, which is a sure investment repellent. He called Think Digital. I don't know if all four of you are familiar with that. I'm not expecting an answer, of course. Think Digital is a consulting and coaching firm. Think Digital has received nearly $400,000 in government contracts over the past two years. Nearly half of the contracts they have received were sole sourced. Two contracts were awarded by PSPC. 
I'm going to leave aside the discussion of sole sourcing because that literally could take on a life of its own. We know that there are rules that allow sole sourcing, but we also know through various reports from the AG and the procurement ombud that there were serious, serious violations of those rules to allow fr liberal, friendly consultants and contractors to receive government funds. Classic example of that, GC Strategies. In providing facts, Larry points out some obvious cases of corruption and outright betrayal of the trust put into his government by the Prime Minister, like contact engineering and favorable treatment of pro-Trudeau companies and persons. He makes a list, and it's a damning one for Justin Trudeau. Also, did you notice how easy it was to figure out the connections between some of these companies and the Liberal Party? From podcasts to listings, it's like they're trying to show everyone that the contracts are given not necessarily to the most qualified firms or candidates, but to those in the Prime Minister's inner circle. Has Minister Duclos asked for a review of firms receiving government contracts that have direct ties to the Liberal Party of Canada? If you responded, I'm not aware or no, I would be asking you, would you be willing to commit to undertaking such a review? But I guess the big question that's on the minds, on the minds of myself and Mr. Barrett, I'm sure Ms. Vignola, and Canadians, what value, what value did Canadians receive in these contracts? When confronted with the Santa list of Justin's many atrocities, the Liberal MPs present find it difficult to respond to the well-codified allegations. That's no surprise, though. There is no defense they can offer against such. Plus, their hesitance to investigate these suspicious occurrences shows that they might be involved. With his blunder in the recent publicized Beach interview, we're curious how the Prime Minister will respond to present events when he returns to Ottawa.